This is the one with Star Cult. The Centurion Who Waited. Weekend at Amy's. Space Florida. A Night at the Museum. And a small to medium sized bang. It's called The Big Bang. Here we go. We're still on our endless voyage All through time and all through space With Slavine and Angels now Dalek, Cybers, Ood and Wow Tennant, Smith and Eccleston And Capali, he's the man Doctor Who is cool again That was Russell's master plan Who back when? Reviewing all new Who there is Who back when? Subscribe and rate on iTunes please Rose and Donna, Amy Pond Rory, Martha and beyond Join us on this odyssey What other choice could there be but Who back when? Who back when? Ladies and gentlemen of Podcast Land, and welcome to another episode of Who Back When? A Doctor Who podcast. Oh, yes. Doc Bars. What a great podcast it is. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we will be uh, reviewing number. You haven't written what number it is. 73. M073. The Big Bang. The Big Bang. <laughs> what a great episode. Wow. Although I think it should be called Big Bang 2, to be honest. Yeah? Mm. I think it should be called Bing Bong. Bing, Bing Bong. Bing Bang. Bing Bang Bong. The Bing, Bing Bong. Bong. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Hey, my name is Marie. <laughs> I will be your host today. Hello. Uh, <laughs> joining me on my show is <laughs> to my left. Hello, I am Ponkin. And to Ponkin's left. Drew Backwood. And that's it. That's everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no live studio audience this time. No live studio audience, unfortunately. Okay. That's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> he was going to be here, but he would rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Once is enough. <laughs> <laughs> he was very useful last week. Though. He was. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. But he'd rather just hear the edited version. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said we're much funnier once we've been edited. <laughs> Did he actually? No. Oh, good. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> no. We're very funny. Especially you, Drew. He thinks you're the best. Uh, well, now I'm inclined to believe you. So. <laughs> you, can't, you can't see, no but I'm giving Drew a thumbs up right now. Oh, I'll give you one as well. Yeah, everyone oh. give Drew the thumbs up. <laughs> Time for us to synopsize, lobify and summarize. So take a view and grab a brew and, and listen to this overview. This free for all we like to call a bite sized chunk of who. Bite sized chunk of who. We open on Amelia Pond flaunting her fantastical star paintings to a horrified Auntie Sharon and Christine. Fortunately, however, she is lured to the National Museum by a strange man and told to wait there until dark when all the adults have gone home. Drawn to the key exhibit at the museum, the Pandorica, young Amelia touches the box and then releases older Amelia, which is when things get complicated, even more so when Rory appears yet again. Through a series of Bill and Ted-esque shenanigans, <laughs> the Doctor, Amy, Rory and River, seemingly the only people left in the collapsing universe, rush to stop a revived Dalek and the erasure of the universe itself. <laughs> Be scar over, you, you are welcome. welcome. Aren't you just... Yeah. Oh, should we dive in with a question? Sure. I don't have one. Though. Okay. <laughs> but we know you do. I do have one. I, I do have a question. I, really? Okay, check this out. Can someone please explain to me why from, was it 102 AD? <laughs> until, until 1943. Until the Blitz. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm going to... You know exactly what I'm going to ask. He dressed as a Roman! Exactly! <laughs> Why did Rory... <laughs> only only the Blitz got him to change his clothes. Like, oh, maybe I'm not as uh, inconspicuous really... as I used to be in this outfit. <laughs> maybe I should uh, blend in a little more. You know that that's the only reason the Nazis bombed right there. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> guys, that's a Roman. <laughs> he must be guarding something important. <laughs> it's because up until that point... His costume, which I assume is also plastic, mm. was unaffected, but then it partially melted in the heat, and he had to hack it off himself and replace it with normal clothes. But is it? Oh. But wait, if he's all plastic, did he? Could he hack it off himself, or was his was himself not part, and the plastic all melded together? And also, did uh, he carve himself a new body? I was going to say, like equally importantly, after he slashed the clothes off his uh, plastic person, did he leave underneath a terrifically bonable body for the entire rest of his life, which he is going to, if I'm not mistaken, live out as a faux human? Mm. Wait, you know what happened was he came to the attention 
of the leadership in the war rooms and Bracewell, his robot <gasps> chum, oh. told him exactly how to go about it and fitted him out with a, uh, you know, He's got that human chest skin. Mm. Yeah. And kicked him out from the modern age. Yeah. Nice. You know what? That's exactly what happened. That makes I'm perfect sold. sense. Yeah. <laughs> there really should have been a scene about that. <laughs> there really should. Yes. <laughs> but you read through in the lines. That's why they had Braceface last week. So <laughs> yeah. we knew that it was... It was, uh, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, waste for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Tick. Tick. Yeah, yeah, I checked it. Very good. <laughs> question answered 5.0, yeah? Question Don't two. tell me you've got another fucking question. I've got more questions. I mean, I, I went right, there in case I, does someone else want to ask a question. Feel free. I don't have any. No? Go for it. All right. Okay, so uh, why in uh, whenever young Amelia, I can't remember wh- which year that is. 1996. Why in 1996? You thank can you. tell by how the hair. And also the graphic on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and the- yeah, the text okay, plates. Sure. <laughs> it's a very revealing text plate. So, okay, fine. Right. <clears throat> why in 1996, <laughs> the year of Demolition Man, why it did... Was it? I thought it was 1994. Well, the film may have been from 1994, but it's set in 1996. The beginning is set in 1996. Wait, hang on. It's 1993. Oh, shit. Oh, no. It is, 19... it is 1993, but the uh. beginning, pre-being frozen, is, is set in, it's like Los Angeles, 1996. Sorry, carry on. Anyway, all right. Okay, so... Watch Demolition Man. <laughs> yeah, watch it. It's fantastic. <laughs> Wesley Snipes' best. Uh, Passenger 57 is pretty good as well. Anyway, right. <laughs> okay. Sandra Bullock's best. <laughs> That's not difficult. Okay, so <laughs> getting back on track. <laughs> Why in 1996, in a world with no stars, A. Year of Terminator 2. <laughs> yes. Why would there be a word and uh, an image in the public consciousness of a star? That Yeah, I wanted to say that because why does Amelia draw a star as we are all taught to draw stars as children? Nobody told her that that's how stars are drawn because yeah. that's not what you see if you see a star in the sky does it look like the five point yeah thing um but i like to think i like to think that stars are in the consciousness because of people like van gogh i i think that he could still see stars and he still painted starry night and richard dawkins and richard dawkins <laughs> yes mm, yeah can we not um, equate those two as if they're two like some summit level geniuses sure <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's Van Gogh and there's Dawkins and then there's the rest of us just <laughs> groveling in <laughs> filth. Just, just occasionally doodling something spiky. That's, yeah. that's as, yeah. as good as it gets. Yeah. They do explain this in episode, which is that stars have appeared in the minds of people throughout history. Millions of people, is, is said. Yeah. And let me, let me oh, provide... Really? I missed this. Okay. Let me provide an example. Goblins. There's no such thing as goblins, but we all have a mental image of a goblin yeah. that springs to mind when I say that word, or we can all picture one. Yeah, but I feel like now we are. So, it, I don't know if we count in this, or our mental image of goblins counts because we've been inundated with images of goblins since it had been popularized. We've all seen Lord of the Rings, and we've all read whatever Hobbits or. It, it, we are aware of what a goblin is. Yeah, so there could equally have been fictive media employing the trope of stars. Yeah, it's probably like sci-fi stuff is like, oh, we found a planet with a star and like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that works actually. But yeah, the, that's where the idea of star cults come from because... I love the star cults. I love the star I love cult. that as a concept. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> is this, this is not the first time that Richard Dawkins has been dropped into... New Who, right? We've we've had a conversation that somehow touched upon Richard Dawkins. I know we've had conversations about like they just throw any old scientist who can get their hands on it. It's like you're an expert on this now because they've done. Um, Wait, Richard Dawkins was on an episode. He was, yeah, he was. No, he was, and so was. Uh, what's the floppy haired ex musician one? Not Patrick Moore, but he's also. Oh, I know Patrick Moore is, but who's the yeah, other Patrick one? Moore as well. But it, no, I know you're you're thinking of uh, oh bloody hell, oh. Uh, Cox. Yeah, Brian Cox. Brian Cox. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. They like to get a scientist of the week in to kind of legitimize it. That's true. Like, look, look, Doctor Who knows real science. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Was Dawkins on the one where the Earth was transplanted and placed elsewhere in space? I think so. Mm. I, yeah, the stolen Earth. That's oh, well done. Okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> 
Okay, it's... yeah, they're just name dropping this week. They didn't even bother to get him in. They could have done a little TV snippet with him on the news. Uh, can I ask a sub question to that? How dare a child draw something imaginary? Well, I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> they, have, they have such a strong reaction to the star thing. It's like she's just drawing a picture. People, draw, children draw unicorns. What is and mermaids. I was just going to say, what is this? A fucking unicorn? Yeah. No, to your room. Yeah. <laughs> Horses don't have horns! <laughs> because they're scared that she will join the star cult. She is a budding lunatic. Is there anything... She's going to start hanging around with that Dawkins, but wouldn't you know, when you look into it, actually Richard Dawkins is right about everything. Does this mean that Richard Dawkins, in this universe, he's got like a Hare Krishna haircut somewhere and he's just like thumbing a tambourine or something? <laughs> yes! <laughs> like, we don't want our kids to join that cult. <laughs> Apologies to any Hare Krishnas out there in podcast land. And possibly Richard Dawkins. <laughs> no. Richard, hey, come on the show. <laughs> he fucking lives in Oxford. <laughs> he does. Yeah, walk three streets over and come on the fucking show, you lazy bum. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where does he live? Three streets over. And his phone number is... <laughs> <laughs> well, that definitely is part of his phone number. <laughs> Just start from 00001 and... Uh, didn't know that enough zeros. 000001. Cut this bit. <laughs> <laughs> sub, sub question. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> There's no sub, sub, sub question, is there? As there are no stars, including the sun, where's the light coming from? Well, it's coming from the burning TARDIS. Yeah. But, no. but what does everybody else in the world think that the Burning Tardis is? The sun, if apparently. If not a star. Yeah, good point. And also, is there no longer a night? Like, is there just... No, well, there is night, because they go out at night to prove that there are no stars. Oh, right, okay. Oh, so, oh, yeah. so, oh sorry, so you're saying the Tardis has basically just taken the place of the sun. Yeah. yeah. And night oh, okay, falls gotcha. within the museum as well. Yeah, that yeah. makes... Oh, no, 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 that makes perfect sense. But yeah, but what? But if the Tardis is acting as a sun, yeah. what do they think the Tardis is? Like, what do they think the sun is? Not a star. They just think not a star. No, they Whatever. think the sun revolves around the Earth <gasps> like people thought until Galileo came along. They do, don't they? They think there Must is do. one sun and we are the only planet, because... Yeah. Because that's true. We're the only planet with any life form left on it because everyone else is extinct. Everything, yeah, you're or right. Or never born, or, you know. Oh my goodness, have, well, we, have we just stumbled upon Moffat's underlying analogy? <laughs> he's, he, which actually, is, he's actually a flat earther. And <laughs> <laughs> no, no, which is that the doctor and humanism comes to enlighten the human race about its actual place within the universe. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, I think yeah, it's I, very, very. I think, I think we just is. struck gold there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for confetti to like, and someone to go. Oh, with one of those, like. <laughs> <laughs> it was all building up to this moment. Exactly, Stephen. If we finally cracked your Easter egg, come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, someone else ask a question or point something out. Marie's got notes. <sighs> yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Um, the first thing I wrote down was, um, you are in a time lock in the Pandorica. This is what I said last week, cause, um, and I couldn't back up my proof because <laughs> it was in the wrong episode. Because you were saying, um, you, you basically, the Pandorica is like a torture box. You're made to be alive and you can't die in it. But I think you, you, you are in like stasis. You're not aware of it because Amy doesn't age a day and she doesn't regenerate. She's just, she's yeah, good not point. conscious for tw- 2000 years. She just goes in the Pandorica and she then does wakes in a, up. She does in a way later. regenerate, though. Can well, you explain she, that? Isn't there there's something about like uh, the DNA that touches the box will somehow? Well, she's. Oh, I can't remember. She's what it is. dead when she goes in. Isn't yeah, she? she's not dying. She's exactly. Actually, yeah, I think dead. if she'd gone in alive, though, she would have remained alive and conscious and aware all that time. Oh, I don't think no, because I think if um, I'm inclined to. Oh wait! No, I think if no, the Pandorica no. was going to regenerate you, it would do it as soon as you're in. It wouldn't. Why would no, it wait? No, because it needed the infusion of young Amelia touching oh, the outside of the box. Did. The doctor says. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But can you explain that? What? Why? Why is that? Is because it that oh, it needs some living DNA contact? But, okay, he's flat out dead. But it has to be exactly the same person's DNA. Yeah, because otherwise, lots of people have touched this box. Yeah, exactly. And she's going to come out of some sort of a- Amy mutant fly yeah, hybrid. Imagine exactly. a fly lands on the box. It's like a Jurassic Park thing. You like you fill in the gaps with frog DNA. So at some <laughs> point, some animal will have touched the box as well. Hey, Rory will touch the box. There you go. Well, he's Rory rubber. He's plastic. DNA. He's plastic. Oh, that's true. He doesn't yeah. have any DNA. But all because he is reality. rubbing up against that box for like eighteen hundred years. Oh. That's all he does. Some of which in the Vatican archives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> 
So, but, but okay, so is the explanation that it it is only her DNA that can trigger this? Yeah, I think it has to be. Yes, I believe that. But is that the actual objective of the box or is that something that the doctor has done to it? Well, this is why I, th- I said, because we were asking why the box was opening um, last time. And this is why I've kind of linked the two because they don't explicitly say it. But the doctor, the first thing he does when he walks under Stonehenge is touch the box. And then the box starts opening. So I sort of think it was programmed oh. for his DNA. They've somehow got his DNA and programmed it in. Yeah. And therefore, it's only him touching it that can awaken the box. So anybody else can touch it over thousands of years and it would just be dormant. But because he was programmed in, it awoke for him. And then the same with Amy. When he plugs Amy into the box, it's then dormant until her specific DNA awakens it 2,000 years later. Yeah, maybe that's how he's sort of preset the sonic when he hands it to Rory or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is the frequency of my DNA or something to that effect. <laughs> yeah. That works. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm. Look, look at us solving this episode. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Moffat is beaming right now. Oh, he is. <laughs> he will not be by the end. No. But oh. right now. Oh. oh, we've got holes to pick in this. Oh, there are, there are loose threads. I sure. don't want to. <laughs> I, I reckon you must <laughs> face the truth. I really, I really, I really enjoyed it, and I was watching it, and I was thinking that they're gonna, they're gonna pick holes in it. Yeah, we are. They're gonna just rip this apart. Yeah, we know, are. And know there are holes in it, and I just don't care. <laughs> That's you where will. I currently stand. You'll I, be made to care. <laughs> you I reckon you're you gonna drag me down, but I'm gonna try. I'm digging. Yeah, because you in. never drag us down, do you? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not your comeuppance. <laughs> I, I reckon your rating and mine are probably quite similar. Okay. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Does it begin with a three? Ooh. 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 Not, not saying a word. Not saying a word. Mm-mm. Spoilers. <laughs> okay, how awkward would it have been if... Spoilers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just... I'm gonna, let me just subtract one. Oh. <laughs> how awkward would it have been if young Amelia had touched the, um, the Pandorica while there were still people in the museum? Yeah, because she... Um, when she goes to reach for the post-it note, she could very easily have just brushed up against yeah. it. There's yeah. nothing to say, don't touch this box until later, Amy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until later. <laughs> well, exactly. It just says, stick around, Until pond. there are no adults in the room. Yeah, uh, and, and what does that mean? Does that mean for a few minutes? I mean, what, what is the attention span of this young I know, child? I thought that she's gone and hid in the museum for like hours. It gets dark in it the does, time that she's there. Well, it doesn't get super dark because they leave the exhibit lights and the television on and and everything but the museum's closed it's at least 5 yeah. p.m no alarms by the way no but they leave the sound effects on yeah yeah important <laughs> <laughs> so i've got a question actually actually oh, actually, actually, actually okay which is that rory has been in ledworth with amy for some time he he is like her schoolboy sweetheart yeah so he knows what young amelia looks like yeah well and also he can he not hear the tenor going amelia pond please Please come and... Is, is he the one speaking oh. over the tannoy? Maybe. No, I don't... Oh, because he's maybe. the security guard in the end who says, what's the problem here? Or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he actually works there. I think he's a fake security guard that just he throws on the uniform and no one questions it. What? No, I think he works there. Regardless, he's plastic. He's not sleeping. He's 24 hour aware. Yeah. Yeah. He's listening to everything that goes on in the day. Yeah. What does he do during the day? Is he there in civilian clothing as a museum visitor? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he's a guide. Because he does... He, I mean, it makes sense that he works the night shift because he never sleeps. Mm. They don't really touch on that. It's like it sounds... When the doc's like, you won't even sleep, you won't... The passage of 2,000 years is going to be horrendous for you. Yeah. And then we just jump 2,000 years and it's like, oh, yay, yeah, yeah, you're here, everyone's happy Yeah, now. it's the same old Rory. It doesn't matter that he's now twice as old as the doctor because, and has twice yes. as much experience. Yes. And Can we see that spin-off, by the way? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd love that. I love that when he's like, how did you stay out of trouble? And he just goes like, what did he say? I can't remember. Poor, like, poorly or something. Oh, I didn't. Or I don't know. Oh, <laughs> it's like, I got in some scraps. Yeah. Um, he's such a cool guy. <laughs> but yeah, but because he, he almost comes across as a bit whiny, actually, because it, he, Amy recognizes him she's like oh my god rory and he's like it's me i waited two thousand years for you and it's like all right like that's the first <laughs> thing you say to her <laughs> like come on yeah and she's like i still shut up <laughs> there's it, it within uh one of my notes like it, it, in the beginning she is very much oh it, it, shut up and kiss me and she's so happy to see him and so on but 
after I'm I'm going to say maybe five minutes, my my note is Amy is already shouting at Rory. Mm. Like she's already just like, oh, you're so slow. We need to hurry up. This is important shit. Yeah. It's like fucking cool at Amy. And oh wait, no, let's talk about that later. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. She's like. Oh. There's only 12 minutes left, Rory. There's a countdown in operation. <laughs> Fuck you and everything about you. <laughs> so, yeah, she's still learned nothing. <laughs> but she hasn't learned anything because she, she just woke up. She was dying in his arms and then she but was alive she again. But she knows what's happened, right? She knows that 2,000 years have passed. Because yeah. the doctor has also implanted some weird knowledge in her brain. Yeah. And I, I, would, I would buy that she was, she was that snippy towards Rory if she shoved him and said, you shot me, you prick! <laughs> yeah, that would, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah he, you're right. He, he deserved that one. That would have been a really good like retro rewrite to fix that. Yeah. Or to somehow justify it, but yeah. no. But yeah, because she's read the, um, the timeline and she knows that everything that yeah, he's exactly. been Exactly. Yeah. Uh, which I I was really moved by that, and then it, and then when the the Roman centurion disappears in the war, and uh, it's just because he took off his Roman clothes. Well, yeah. But d- but did you not? Were you worried that he died again? Yeah, he's yeah. constantly dying. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't. I know. I was really fully expecting him to die. Like, and be brought back, obviously, because he's Rory. But I was expecting him to die again, and then yeah. it was and a it, big and actually, surprise twist. Though it was cheap, it was it was a lovely video. It was well yeah. narrated, it and was. it set up a nice legend. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. However, how did the Pandorica get from the Vatican in 1230? To here, when did we raid the Vatican? I say <laughs> we. I mean the British, the you know, British. and their constant colonising and stuff. But we never went to the Vatican archives and plucked out. A were there steps? Were there steps in between? They were never shown on screen. We might have just borrowed it. It might have been one of those like travelling exhibits. I was going to say, yeah. That no- I mean, maybe they donated it or yeah. something, and yeah. You- I don't uh, know. Possibly. We have- no, no, because it was no. here in 1941 during oh, the Blitz. It was, yes, you're right. So why have we not given it we back? We borrowed it before the Blitz and then it survived. It okay. yeah, now it's legally well, ours. Now you've, like, earned it. Find us Blitzers, Blitzers <laughs> Keepers. <laughs> Sorry, all the records were destroyed. It has, it's probably ours. This so is a we'll different Pandorica. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yours, yours got ruined. Yeah. <laughs> These are not the fine. Pandoricas you're looking for. Pretty sure. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my um, my note, my note, my second note mm, reads, "Yes, Rory." Um, and it, it was, <laughs> and I remember writing it when uh, he punches the doc in the face. Oh. Yes, Rory. Yes, Rory. Yes, my son. <laughs> yeah, that is a, that's a really good scene. That's a wonderful moment. Yeah. I love the doc, the look on the doctor's face as well, where he's just like. Yeah, this was all intentional. Yeah. I, I'm on your side. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad that you're back. I was just testing yeah. you. And that's great oh. jaw work from Smith as well. Like, <laughs> he has got a lot of anger on that thing. <laughs> Look at me moving through all three dimensions, pitch, and you're on It's like a giraffe trying to chew. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> a bit giraffe like it's a little bit giraffe what they do they just it's like when you have a dog or a horse on tv like they just put some peanut butter in in that smith's (laughs) mouth and then someone else is dubbing over him (laughs) bruce forsyth probably (laughs) yeah they were my like opening uh notes and then i wrote nothing until the end because i was so engrossed in the story Ah, yeah. So you're on your own for a little bit, but I can come back later. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> please, please comment on these things as well, like okay. pre <laughs> end observations. <laughs> we finally tie the knots around the um, the you, what was it called? The angel episodes when they're in the forest. Flesh and stone. <gasps> Ooh, Flesh and stone. Thank yes. you. Yeah, and. Uh, it, uh, because I remember talking about this at the time and trying desperately not to give anything exactly, away. But exactly. I was like, it's going to be so good. Because that's the, like fantastic. one of the very first episodes, isn't it? it was Sorry, like it was one of the what? really early episodes. It was like the fifth episode. But she's very new to the Doctor and it's all about like trust and stuff. And then the fact that it comes oh, back around. Yeah. yeah. And they planned it all from the beginning. I think, I think that's really cool. Oh, it's so cool. And it works so well because you read it Without this knowledge, you just read it as him coming back for her and and understanding that she's scared and trying to reassure her. Yeah. And then the second time you watch it, you kind of realise what it actually is, and it has so much more of an impact, and it's just wonderful. I really love that. <sighs> I'm speechless. That yeah. is a good use of timey wine and yeah. wibble wobble. Because <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it was a bit um, a bit naff when it's just like shouting, like Amy, 
Scrooge looks up and it's like not yeah, really. That adds nothing. Wait, what was? When he's, he's like time is his time stream is rewinding and he's seeing her oh. at, at different points. Um, and the first couple are just a bit naff, and then you get to the angels, and it's like, okay, now it, now it makes sense. Oh, I well, I agree that the angel bit is certainly it's the best one, but I quite like the other one as ones as well because it's almost nightmarish. It's like it, I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I was not expecting and, and hadn't figured out that oh, so we're now going to tie this back yeah. to the angels. But it, there was that this nightmarish quality of oh shit, you're just. You're just a ghost. You're just an echo of yourself and no one's going to see you. I quite liked it from the doctor's perspective, but what bothered me was that he saw Amy at all these different points and he shouted her and she looked up and he's like, ah, so she can hear me. But at no point did Amy go to the her current doctor. Oh, yeah, like, did you hear oh, this? Oh, by the way, like I keep hearing your voice shouting my name even when you're not in the room. That's a, that's a very good well, point. Well, in, in the lodger, Amy spent the entirety of the logic stuck in the TARDIS. Didn't she? Was she actually ever outside James Corden's But house? that was after the Lodger episode. Because he even says, like, oh, that's Amy putting the note in the window. Because they do the Bill and Ted window. thing again. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, how did I know to get that? Oh, this you is, must go Wait, wait, wait. The... Can, you, can you at least screenshot how many stories are on that house then? Because there should only be one. Oh! oh! And I'm, whether there's two or there's one, I'm interested either way. Me too. Oh, clever. Yeah. And has Moff actually, you know, thought this through? No, there should, be, there should be two, because she puts, she must go back in time to put the note there so that the doc can find the house. But she puts the note in the post office. Is it the post office that we see, or the house? Ah, uh, it'd be the post office. Or is it just like I feel some like we're outside house. James Gordon's house, but I take Marie's point in that it should have two stories have at two this stories. point, because it is an illusion. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Ho, ho, ho. All right, okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay, so it... Um, uh, but still in that little timeline. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Um... Oh, but this is jumping too far ahead, I guess. But no, it's not. No, we don't do... When, wh- we can, we when can he goes to little seven-year-old Amelia and tells her the like, bedtime story, like, I love that. And, um, and just the fact that he does go back, because that's always the most heartbreaking bit, is this little seven-year-old girl and all her like, wildest dreams are about to come true and she's going to go off and see the stars, and then he never shows up, and he, she yeah. has to wait so long. And he carries and it, her back to bed. Yeah, and, and he actually does go back to, for her. Yeah. And she, you know, she sleeps through it all, bless her, but... um. It's really sweet that they kind of tied that end up as well a little bit. Does that mean that she... Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, wait, hang on. Is that right? So what What happened? Yeah, no. Wait, oh, Pauls, I'm so confused. <laughs> he's not undone, right? Or is he undone? Because he's in the process of yet. being undone. Well, if he's undone, then why would she be outside sleeping in the first place? But he's not undone yet. His time is rewinding. Oh, okay. So it's kind of unraveling. So, so he's doing this, but in the end, she will never have gone out and fallen asleep yeah. in the garden yeah. anyway. But somehow she still has that memory of it because she knows yeah. the raggedy doctor oh. she has the imaginary friend but in this universe he is a proper imaginary friend yeah that's true that is the pivotal word somehow yeah yeah there's there's a mm. there's a crack in the wall Return the, crack. the universe <laughs> is pouring into her head uh, and that yeah i mean there, there's there's so much more of the uh, well if you remember something then you can bring them back slash love conquers all yeah. in this episode as well more so than in the last episode also we're nothing but memories so you know <laughs> well we <laughs> might as well words, be. nothing but stories doesn't matter we might as well be but the, the in, in, in oh my god okay so the crack thing what uh, oh crack the, the it, did you also find it so fantastic that all of a sudden he he added more value to the crack? The crack has been damaging her mm. all her life. It yeah. erased her parents. Yeah. I didn't see that coming either. That was fantastic. I mean, what, sad and her, also amazing. That she got her parents back? Or... Oh, no, the, the, fact well, that... the, the fact that she had parents. Yeah. The, the fact that, like, oh, of course, the crack just erases everything. We've just been seeing this from almost like the crack's point of view up until now. Yeah. Very clever, I thought. Mm. Mm. So presumably her parents came a cropper via the crack, the same way Rory did in the Silurian episode. Exactly. The, the light touches you. Oh, poor What's Augustus Pond. Oh. Hungry Earth. Yeah, it's Hungry like Earth. Yeah. See, I don't know. If, I don't know if I buy that really because when we saw the crack, when it it like took Rory. Yeah. There was a light shining through it, and it was a like almost like l- tendrils. A really like demon crack that was coming for you. Yeah. Um, how would it have got her parents and not her? She slept in that room. Like okay, so I I I oh, can and, see and this. In the first episode, the doctor puts his ear against. Yeah. Them, so like, 
Yeah, but yeah, in, the the in the Silurian episode, we also see him shove his entire arm through it and nothing happens. And grab yeah. a bit of the TARDIS. So it seems. Which we need to talk about. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do need to talk about it. The, the, the logic surrounding the crack or like how the crack operates is a little iffy, maybe. But I can definitely see uh, D- D- Amelia's parents. Like grabbing some plaster and you're like, oh, we're gonna DIY this crack in the wall. Let's they just fix never this. Came back. And then, vroom, gone. And then somehow, vroom, gone. And yeah. why did Aunt Sharon then move in? Well, because she needed a legal guardian. But what- wait, wait, wait. Well, how does she even exist? Yeah. Her parents Sharon? never existed. No, no. parents. Amelia uh, never Amelia. existed. Oh, you got me there. <laughs> we, we're back to the sperm conundrum. <laughs> the, the, like, the, the, there could never have been an Amelia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, house has memories. Yeah, but who's the... I mean, surely the memories of someone who at this point is still permissible to exist. Okay, hear me out. (laughs) The house remembers the sperm. Why is it just people (laughs) falling through the crack and not the house? Wait, what? Why is it just people, biological matter, falling through the the crack and not the house? The, the, The crack is devouring the entire universe at the end of this episode. Oh, that's a good point. And the house is just... You know, it's well, matter it, the same exactly. as the rest it should of like us. just fold in on itself. Just yeah. like eat more of the wall until everything falls into it. Yeah, it's just crack it's a black crack hole. hole. Yeah. <gasps> oh. <laughs> that was good. Was it good for you too? Indeed. Let's light a cigarette. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna um, <laughs> I'm gonna pose an alternate theory because I feel like no, you're getting hung up on the crack. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and Lest we forget, this episode is nothing to do with the crack. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, because I think possibly the the crack didn't steal her parents. Maybe, somehow. Maybe, somehow. Maybe her parents just died. They were in a car crash and they just tragically died. Okay. But what the crack is doing is stealing Amy's memories. So her... she And maybe she was devastated at the time, and but the crack kind of slowly... It's stealing her like, memories. Take... Yeah, if you can that restore her parents, yeah. then you can restore the sexy Italian invasion, and modern day London will be awash with legions of <laughs> sexy centurion Rory's. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a stretch. Okay. Yeah, I don't buy it. I'm sorry. Oh. Because no, because it did. No, <laughs> it did. It's, wait, because she also she didn't remember the Daleks. That was like the Doc's first kind of clue that she wasn't quite whole like, yeah, yeah because everybody else from her time frame knew what a dalek was because it was a dalek invasion and she had forgotten them so i do think i think it's just it's stealing her memories which is why she can still exist even though she doesn't have parents because they weren't taken by the crack they just died however they died and she's just her memories have been taken maybe she was just mm. scuba diving in spain with her older cousin donna mm. whoa <laughs> yeah i think it's too much of a coincidence that we have fractious gingers in two consecutive series. <laughs> they have to be related. No, I don't buy that. That's also, that's like Skywalker logic. No, no, no. I, I, um, well, everything's to do with bloodlines. Yeah, everyone's yeah, related. Screw that shit. Mm. Yeah. We're all individual. We've all, we've all got the, uh, you know, potential within us. What were you going to say about the exploding TARDIS? Or the f- bit of the TARDIS? Just that, I mean, what is beyond the crack? It is the Neversphere, or whatever River calls it, the void, as in something the void ship travels through uh, from a few series ago, and Ah. therefore it is potentially infinite dead space, and the Doctor just reaches through a letterbox, essentially, and there is some post waiting on the other side, and lo and behold, it's a bit of the exploding TARDIS. Across the potential infinity of this void, it's it's just right there. Uh, Marie, did you want to say something there? somehow he grabs hold of it. Well, because the TARDIS is on the other side of the void because the Doctor drove it into the other side of the void so that it could close the cracks. And why wouldn't it be... Why wouldn't you park it just on the other side of the crack? It's not going to fly it all the way into the... Yeah, after exploding, why couldn't you just retain the ability to park it exactly where you wanted? Yeah, why not? (laughs) Somehow. Well, okay, so the... When we see the TARDIS explode or a being like it's just about to explode it's the The small to medium sized bang the doors are right up against a wall yeah so it explodes there's a crack in that wall if you will like it's almost like a manifestation of the fabric of 
the universe. So is that the other side of Amy's wall that I, River is looking at? Well, basically, yes, in a way, right? I mean, it's not exactly a wall, that wall, but, I mean, it's up against a solid surface. Yeah. It explodes, it'll probably crack it somehow, and that's exactly where the... Uh, where the TARDIS bits are. I, I've got two oh, other oh, theories. I, I, my point to that is the Doctor reaches through from way under Wales. He's not reaching through Amy's bedroom wall. But the crack wh- is Which on the other side of... So, well, on the other side of that crack, there. there's, there's a, a giant eyeball, yeah. Yeah, there's a prison. The, okay, so two other theories. Numero uno. So what the Doctor should do, he should reach through his handkerchief and someone goes, Ah, my eye! <laughs> <laughs> I sort of forgotten about Prisoner Zero and that that's uh, that whole thing is that's on the other side of the crack as well. Yeah. yeah. How is that also in the uh, nether sphere? I, ab- I have absolutely no idea. Those aliens, the uh, eyeballs, the Atraxi, yeah. they are mentioned among the aliens that show up yeah, at Stonehenge. Yeah. So that's our universe. Yeah. It's very strange. Mm. But okay, hang on. So two other theories. Number one, couldn't the TARDIS be helping him? Wait, no, let's go back. I've just remembered... Okay, let's rewind. I've remembered about <laughs> Prisoner Zero because okay. it was... Wasn't it that Prisoner Zero escaped through the crack into the void and then the Atraxi followed him? So they're not from the other side. They just mm. went into the other oh, side. Oh, they're from the Maybe. other side of the other side. Yeah. Gotcha. Maybe. Oh, oh, I see. Right, so they like they travel through the void into... Hello from the other side! <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Like, so you would go through Amy's wall or the crack, wherever the crack is, yeah. on Spaceship UK. The crack is everywhere. The a crack UK. appeared in the prison where they were holding Prisoner Zero. Yeah. He saw his way out and he escaped yeah. through the crack into the void. And then the Atraxi had to follow him through. And then from the void into our, yeah. on t- into and then our they side. Jumped the into void is flowers. famously navigable. Yeah. Yeah, oh, of course. I suppose when there are cracks in it, then you can make your way towards one. Yeah. Because, you know, the void is, you know. You, there is stuff to grab onto and propel yourself thereby. I don't feel like the Atraxi would be able to. They seem much more, quote-unquote, grounded, whereas the fish whatever monster from that episode, yeah. 11th Hour... Dr. Dyson, no! That one, exactly, is even described as some sort of interdimensional yeah. being. So I can I can see that travelling through the... Bo- any, oh, okay. Some interdimensional Randall from Monsters, Inc. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh, poster. Oh, I want that. <laughs> I, I, I want that on my wall. Um, okay, the, a, a question for a potential second theory. Isn't the crack, I've hinted at this before, but like, isn't the crack later on retconned for the 50th anniversary? Is that the same crack that Gallifrey is on the other side of? No, I thought that was within a, a completely new piece of technology. Yeah, because Gallifrey is like in a, in a time In a like, time bubble. bubble. Yeah. But do we not well, get to see... Is it also in the void? We get to see a crack, right? Mm. And it is, in fact, I well, I think, maybe I'm just misremembering this. The 50th anniversary wasn't that long ago, but I've still forgotten about this. <laughs> that doesn't... Yeah, well, we already talked about how forgetful I am. But like, the, the, I don't think it's your being forgetful. I think it's such a tenuous link to reality and I feel like consistency the, with itself. But isn't it a callback to this crack? Possibly, but it's not Whether a good. The one. Gallifreyans send so. energy, more regeneration energy through a, oh, the a orange crack. crack. Yeah, isn't that this crack? It's because no. it's quite a distinctive shape. If it was supposed yeah. to be the same crack, you would recognise it. Yeah. I want to see a photo of that crack now. Okay, we're we're googling this. I'm we're live go- googling this. I'm Google the crack. Doctor Who's crack. That is definitely the same crack. Boom. Yeah, Look at this. that is. That's a hundred percent the same crack. Yeah. So, so the whole of Gallifrey. Uh, I'm, ju- I'm just. Oh, is that ancient? Yeah, that's from the fiftieth anniversary. Okay. That's a hundred percent the same crack. All right. Yeah. So Shazamatron. Huh. Does that mean that the crack is? Is it the same crack? Is it? Has it been? Or will it have been retconned? Or could it be the Time Lords on the other side of the crack helping him figure out what's going on by going... Oh, Handing him like, a bit of TARDIS. Like, I think that arm belongs to Matt Smith. <laughs> put, a, put a plonk a bit of wood in it. <laughs> See what he does with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're just like, they're just fucking with him. <laughs> like, what are we going to do? Oh, like, let's see if he scratches your ass. <laughs> Maybe give, it, give him some TARDIS. <laughs> So the Time Lords have a, a long view of exactly how Gallifrey is going to be restored to the universe or however. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, if anyone were to have that foresight, it would be the Time Lords, I suppose, and the technology to navigate the void. 
Yeah. Bingo bongo. I think it it's works. the best theory we've got so far. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can I bring up some more problems with just the science and the cracking? Go for it, go for it, go for it. We have to. Yes. So far, all of these problems, by the way, have not affected my score. Good. Me too. Number one. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Famous last words. <laughs> How did everyone know throughout the series, except the Doctor, that the Alliance was going to put him in the Pandorica? They, including Randall from episode one, couldn't have followed that part of the timeline because then they would have been part of the collapsing universe, realised they'd been wrong and undone nothing to prevent the cracks and would have been a lot less taunting. Oh. Are they taunting him about the Pandorica? Because the thing that they always seem to taunt him, especially that first episode and they're going, da, 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 no, it's all, yeah. yeah. Ugh. And it's not just then, it does happen. It does happen again and again. But, but which, always... which other races have said that? I think the it's the Atraxi. Did. No, not the Atraxi. It's the, uh, what's it called? The, the fish dimension. Ran- Randall. Uh, Randall, yeah. Randall, yeah. No, 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 but also the, <laughs> is it the fish, the waters of Venice? Vampires of Venice. Vampires of Venice. Yeah, I think oh. they do too. They yeah, do you're right. It. But they're always referring to the silence. They're not referring to the Pandorica. Good. Yes, that's true. So I think whatever they're referring to still hasn't happened because we still don't know what the silence is. But we have heard Pandorica in other scenarios. We've had River say it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we have Randall. Do we get it anywhere else? I thought the angels said it. I don't, oh. think, I don't think Randall says... I don't think they say about the Pandorica explicitly. I don't they th- say that the doctor doesn't know something, though. Yeah, but they're talking about the silence, and he doesn't know what the silence is, and they're mocking him because he's this supposedly all powerful, like all knowing Time Lord. Yeah, that t- his name is Time Lord, and he does, and he, there's a whole part of the time stream that he's not aware of. All right. Yeah. So on the subject of the silence, I'm going to skip ahead to number three. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is probably. Right, Do they increase in caliber? Yeah. The cracks just occurred, right? Because of the necessary explosion of the TARDIS yes. to save the universe. Yeah. So why did there have to be some sinister motive behind this explosion? For someone to be hissing through the cracks, silence will fall, doesn't work with a plan to annihilate the universe. It means they would have had exploding the TARDIS and Doctor occasioning Big Bang 2 as their motive, hmm. which makes no sense. Good point. I hadn't thought about that. I'd, but the, he doesn't... The Doctor doesn't explode the TARDIS in order to save the universe. The TARDIS is exploding anyway. Yeah, yeah but it's it seems a burning as though, TARDIS. But it seems as though there's an intelligence behind that explosion. Yeah, like somewhat, something's drawn it to that point and... I don't think the TARDIS necessarily would have exploded if if the Doctor hadn't done well, hadn't it was put a, the Pandorica in it. I think the universe would have just collapsed into it and that would have been the end. It would have been but, an implosion. But isn't that supposedly yeah. what the like silence will fall is it is silencing the universe so if their plan had have gone through it w- wipes out the universe entirely but in that case there's no cracks it just works and that's it it's over yeah but now there are no, no cracks, cracks right through. now the cracks are over and done with yes but all through this series we've been seeing them talking through cracks yeah which happened we- to have happened after the tardis has exploded and everything's on I- its way to being sorted out no 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 i think Sorry, did, what, did I just interrupt you there? No, no, no. Okay. I, just, I just enjoyed how you said no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> I'm going to leap to the defense of this episode. I think that we basically get a fake universe the way that we later on Capaldi times get a fake doctor. As in, I, I'm referring to when, when the doctor has to spend his, whatever, 10,000 years you know, punching a wall. 55 yeah. billion years, but and he basically, he, Sorry, yeah. He basically just gets cloned over and over again. And it's not the real doctor. We're watching clones mm. of, of the doctor. So here, what we've been doing is we've been watching a copy of... Oh, sorry. We've been watching, quote-unquote, the real universe. And now the universe is going to be replaced by a carbon copy of it. Yeah. Yes, but... But for the cracks to have been a- appearing, they but, but they now in the copy copy that we will see henceforth, there will be no cracks. That's my point. Yeah, because basically. the Doctor is then reversed. But the mm, uh, there's a yeah universe one point and two point isn't there? Yeah. Wait, how did the cracks appear in universe one point if the TARDIS has already exploded in it? Is the point because there's an exploded TARDIS which he is able to grab, retrieve from the other side of the crack, which. The only thing that can exist after the TARDIS has exploded is Universe 2.0, because that is what ends Universe 1.0. Okay, got a theory. Do you want to jump on this? No. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. So he says in this episode that they are 
the universe is collapsing and they are just the last flicker of it. They're just experiencing you know, the, the last remnants of the universe, of space and time before it is naught. Possibly what we have been watching, the, the last 50 years of Doctor Who, have just the been... Last, wait, you're dragging the whole <laughs> series from yeah. Hart and Alon into this? All of it. Well, I want to see where you're going. I with remain this. to be impressed. Yeah, me too. Well, uh, th- what, what I'm saying is maybe like we just didn't know, but the universe was the universe is a big place. Maybe the universe has just been slowly but surely dying, and no one knew until now. The Doctor's been going from the beginning to the end of the universe constantly. At no point saying, "Oh, this is a bit more cramped than it used to be." Okay, you know what? Okay, 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 okay. From the forget the last fifty years because <laughs> w- w- whatever the 50 because what years, have they got to do with it? Well, fifty years are just this is fifty years from our point of view, so it, it doesn't even matter. Well, let's let's say it's from we're just a launch pad. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's say from the, the doctor's point of view, from the very first appearance of the cracks, from then on, it's all been like, oh well, the universe is dying, and now well, the universe has been dying since the beginning, but. I mean, I don't see how it is accorded a special significance in the way you're well, implying. No, I, I'm not giving it any special significance. I'm just saying this is not a plot hole. I'm, I'm saying this... It's this, a series-wide hole. No. And we've all fallen into it. No, I'm saying this makes perfect sense. I'm, I'm saying this Somehow. is... Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, pistols at dawn. No, it's yeah. actually, I'm, I'm thinking this makes sense. It's like, fine. The, the TARD has exploded... It rips a bunch of holes in the fabric of space and time, and... A bunch of cracks. Cracks, yeah. fine. Cracks in, in space and time, and uh, it'll take a while for those cracks to take over everything and, and undo everything. Just we haven't as- seen a single crack until this series. What does it matter? I think it matters. No! <laughs> we've seen cracks both... Uh, as in, in, we, we've seen cracks in uh, our time. In 1996, we've seen cracks in the far-flung future. Oh, Cra- I see what you mean, actually. Cracks yes. are everywhere. I'll give you that like, much. 50 years of Doctor Who mean nothing, because 50 years are from our point of view, but he's travelled way more than 50 years into the future, and he's travelled way more than 50 years into the past. So, like, the, the cracks, they exist everywhere. There's sin- a crack on the wall in the, on the first, like, cliff face in the universe. Yeah, it, there you go. Yeah. Yes, there are cracks everywhere, and uh, it, it it just takes a while for for the universe to disintegrate, yeah. just as it takes a while to pop a Pandora in the TARDIS and reboot it. And this whole time, we just didn't know, but it was destroying, b- being destroyed, and it was on its way to having I love to be this rebooted. Theory. I'm totally on board with it. Boom, that. cell five. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it doesn't take a while to put the Pandora in the TARDIS and reboot it. That shit happens instantly. Yeah, oh, in 12 minutes? Well, no, that's just while they're fannying about up and down the building <laughs> until the Doctor dies. And he's there going and wiring himself in and programming it and doing all the techie stuff. Yeah, yeah. Despite being 90% dead, so yeah. actually that could have happened in a lot quicker time. <laughs> anyway, should we, should we hit point two? Let's do it, let's do it. Let's and do it. then we can move on from this segment. <laughs> <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> Why did they need atoms from reality before it started collapsing to reboot the universe? Presumably after history starts collapsing, some of the atoms have leaked out the crack into the void, and rebooting from the remaining atoms won't work. But doesn't that mean that every atom in the universe is in some way connected to and affected by every other atom, so that once they start going through the cracks, they're all qualitatively different, and they can't use just any atoms that are left? Yeah, I love it. Don't you as well? (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea what he just said. I, I I love that line of like oh you can you can you could deduce all of the universe from any teeny tiny little ant atom. Is that I what, love that idea. So is that that's basically the principle is that there are atoms within the Pandorica that are they're like safe almost they've been trapped in this space and the rest of the atoms outside the Pandorica are tainted now. Yeah, and that's how they can reactivate the Dalek because the Dalek is as if remembered by a previous universe or it's restored yeah. to its previous existence yeah. from being an after image. Yeah. yeah. I'd buy it. Yeah. Yeah. You Why guys not? will buy a fucking <laughs> lot. <laughs> <laughs> there are so there are like fifty levels of security in the Pandorica. You don't know what technology they have. True. Yeah. Also, if you're going to buy, oh, well, if this little girl touches the outside of the Pandorica, then the adult version of said girl inside the Pandorica is somehow rejuvenated, then why couldn't you extrapolate that? Yeah. Why, why couldn't you apply She's that same principle? She's brought back to life. The exactly. Dalek is there. There's like a shadow of a Dalek. That Dalek 
hasn't been erased yet. It yeah, will that be. That Dalek isn't touching the thing. The, the, the girl has the same DNA as the person inside. That, that is a connection that, yeah. that is not too tenuous for me to buy. Agreed. Mm. But the Pandoric is like a magic box. It has like uh, magic shiny lights. I see. So when a magic box hits another magic box, then we can believe anything. I feel like, yeah, oh, this yeah. is is this not the principle of Doctor Who? <laughs> like you have to you have to suspend disbelief a little bit. Yeah. The operative word there is a little bit. <laughs> like like some rules still have to apply. And in this episode, none do. The in the last episode, seldom, you know, precious few did. And in this, none at all. <laughs> But you guys see me on board. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm glad that you brought up point two, the, your, your second point, because that's raised my score back <laughs> that decimal point I that I had say, lost before. All of this is just raising my score. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point, Drew. Thank you. I yeah, hadn't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to lower my score in reaction to it, because... No. <laughs> to offset, to get the average right. <laughs> Man, I wish Nick were here. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay <clears throat> anything else well no because I, um just to justify that a little bit i think it's really nice that you can have these big sort of philosophical like sci-fi questions and like what is life and how does it exist and, and technology and time and like that's what great makes great sci-fi and fair enough we don't have all of the kinks ironed out but i think it's wonderful that you can discuss it and get so animated by it so that's why it's raising my score up because it's not very often in a doctor episode that we get to have those big discussions yeah, but i go to church every sunday and think what is life and why do we exist and i get that there so some yeah. of us have to do yeah, we, we need doctor who drew <laughs> some of us don't go to church every week <laughs> i also love that in this episode we get very high concept sci-fi and we get some, of, balls. <laughs> some of the best Bill and Ted Oh, ever. yeah. <laughs> no, I will give you that. If you are going to do a Bill and Ted, do it in the most full of flair, with yeah. the greatest eclat, like the absolute nail it. Yeah. Just go for it. Dial it up to 11. Yeah. It, oh, he kills it. It is amazing. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. All right, another, no, I don't. I'm running out of decimal points here. <laughs> <laughs> You guys sickening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, since we uh, talked about the Dalek for a bit, how badass is River when she just... Mercy! Mercy! <laughs> Mercy! <laughs> that scene is... <laughs> She's a total badass. No, she absolutely is. That's a fantastic scene. It died. See, I don't... <laughs> 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 I love that. I love when, I love when she goes and... Meets Amy and Rory, and she and she goes, it died, and that and she's really cool and calm about it, and that's amazing. But I don't, I hate the scene where it's like the camera's at a slight angle and it keeps getting closer and closer, and she's like, say it again, like it's just, it's a bit cheesy, isn't it a bit cheesy? Yeah, it's good cheese. Mm. Oh, I like it. <laughs> it's good extra mature. <laughs> yeah. But I like, I liked um <laughs> when she goes, he goes, you are, you are a companion of the doctor. You want your mercy? I'm sorry, my Dalek impression is not as good. No, that's a, that, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for bringing all these sound bites, Marie. Stick yeah, with it. Thirty episodes from now, <laughs> it'll be as bad as mine. Um, and she goes, "My name's River Song. Check your records again." I feel like that's enough. And she sh- and he should have asked for mercy, and she just shot him. And it, but it feels like she's taunting him. She's like playing with him, and that doesn't feel. I don't know. I liked it. Yeah. It was like a Timothy Dalton as James Bond <laughs> moment, just like. Fuck you for feeding my friend's legs to shock. Yeah, it's good. Let's okay. let's talk about River now because I have so many points. No, oh, oh, right. <laughs> Number four. Oh god, oh. <laughs> I thought we were done with three. No, I just thought one. Okay. This better be a bad one as well. <laughs> oh, Why is there only one Dalek there? There were five Paradigm slash Power Ranger Daleks. There was a whole bunch of Cybermen. There were Sontarans. Why is this one Dalek the only after image? I think there, no, no, there are same. more Daleks. Yeah, there's only one that's revived. But the light only shines on one of them. It only the Pandoric opens a tiny bit, and the light just goes. So there are two in the museum. Two Daleks in the museum. Yeah, right? but there's probably yeah. one in the Louvre. There's probably one in the like, yeah. Mer- like they're all over. Oh, the and the Cybermen and Sontarans are just fossils in time scattered across the museums of the world. Yeah. This museum, by the way, what the fuck is this exhibit? <laughs> it's like oh, so we've got this Pandorica, which gets a not huge room and not a lot of people go and see it. Then we have two 
freaking crazy Daleks, which are like, you know, fossilized space aliens. Nobody cares about them. Next to a polar, polar bear. bear. Yeah. It's like, here are all the extinct creatures of Earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the fireball TARDIS has melted the ice caps long before now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the dodo in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, dodos are flourishing. <laughs> <laughs> Millions of dodos. Sorry, River Song. Bit. River Song. I know, it's just while we were on River, I just... Uh, river, it's great, I love River. Um, <laughs> my, Good section. Yep. <laughs> my, my point about River um, is when... Okay, so when, um, when we realise the Doctor's plan... Um, and she's like, oh, that's brilliant. He's going to create the Big Bang 2. And she kind of explains it to Rory and Amy. And um, and then she comes up to Amy and says, oh, he wants to talk to you now. He wants to say goodbye to you. He doesn't really know me yet. Mm. And oh, my God. And that broke my heart. And I was like, the man, the love of your life, the man who we, I think in this episode, we kind of learned that she's married to. Yeah, that's been yes, hinted at pretty heavily yeah, before yeah. as well, hasn't it? But um, so we know what he means to her, and she just has to say he doesn't want to say goodbye to me because I'm a, a relative stranger to him. He wants to say goodbye to you, that you're the companion. And I was like, it's really, really heartbreaking. And I thought, oh my god, River, you are so cool. How are you that cool? Like that you can just say that and you're not breaking down. I thought like I had so much respect for her. Um, and then at the end, you realize that she's fucking in on it. She knows what the plan is all along. And so that's why she's so cool. Because she knows it's not the last time she's going to see him. She's not just saying makes, goodbye to yeah, him. Yeah, that just makes her even cooler. It makes her so much cooler. And it's like <laughs> they're kind of first, they're kind of colluding together without Amy as well. So yeah. they're kind of, their relationship is growing stronger at the same time. Hang on, hang on. Are you sure that she knows that this is all part of the plan? Because doesn't she say, my timeline could be rewritten? I thought that was part of the tragedy of River in this episode that actually we've been assuming all along. And you said last week, is there actually any real peril to do with River? Yes, time can be rewritten. She can be undone even from this point forward. Well, I feel like they there's it's a risky plan and they both know that it might not work. So that she's a chance, there's, there is a peril that it, it could still be rewritten. Um, and the doctor, when he's, when time's rewinding, he looks genuinely concerned and he's like, oh no, this plan that I had isn't going to work. She can't, like, she can't see me. I can't talk to her. Um, and you do kind of feel like maybe it's not going to go right. But then in the end, when he turns out, he comes out of the box and a, River gets to the wedding. So she remembers the doctor and knows and is part of the party. And planet. Amy. And, and still has the diary. I don't know how she still has the why diary. Why is it empty? That's a bit like... Oh. No, Doc, um, Doc zaps it. And oh, he, he He's does. wipes it because he says, I put all the memories back in. Like, he, he put the writing back in, but I didn't peek. Oh. There's a line there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, so I think the, the peril is that the plan might not work, but they have a plan. D- does the plan also factor in their memories? Because uh, his last words to Amy are something to the effect of remember your parents and when you wake up, they'll be there. Yeah. So if River remembers stuff, is she going to have the same relationship with him? Well, he must also count on his own memory, right? He must remember, I mean, he must assume that he will remember River, for example. Well, and this therefore... is what, the other thing I wanted to ask is that because... How does River remember the Doctor? If the Doctor's on the other side of the void and he has never existed, Amy remembers him because the crack fed into her dreams and the universe and, blah, 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 and all this logic. But River River remembers him because she must to, in order to be there at that time. That's true. Skywalker. But, uh, River's but, Amy's daughter. But I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> yeah, remember. Well, logic. it is, yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't remember how it is that the Doctor remembers Rory. And whether that's the same sort of logic there, that River, because she's a time traveller... Holy shit, it just dawned on me that Rory is now flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all being oh, rewritten. Oh, is he, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just dawned on me. How do we know that he's flesh and blood? Because... Big Bang 2. Exactly. It's all started uh, It's just start from scratch. New. Everything you've just oh. seen has been erased. Uh, thank you. That was going to be a question. <laughs> but... Wait, he also says, like, oh, how do we forget the Doctor? So in a way, oh, maybe, they do they still have remem- memories from all, uh, Universe 1.0? Because they're all time travellers, because I'm sure that so they... So they're sort of immune When to Rory it. gets taken by the crack and the Doctor remembers him, and he says something, I wish I could remember exactly, but it's 
something about because he's a time traveler the kind of normal rules of memory don't apply to him yeah and amy has it a bit because she's traveled in the tardis You're but right. she doesn't it's not strong enough and that's why she forgets him so i think the same must apply that river I think you're right, yeah. Because she's kind of outside of the normal rules of time and space, she can still remember the Doctor. But why can't she bring him back? Why does Amy need to bring him back? Uh, oh, that's a good point. Why can't River do it? Uh, why, why, why not? Oh, I don't think that's... But I think... No, I think that's a flaw. No, no, no. I think... Because I think there must be something... There must be something about Amy and that memory and her connection to the crack because... If any, if he could have just brought Rory back, if that was the case, because he could remember Rory, and the oh, doc, the true. doc doesn't have the ability to just bring recall people from the dead, but Amy does somehow. I love that word. <laughs> Every time I say it, <laughs> Drew just eyes oh, me up. It's so useful. <laughs> Almost any circumstance. <laughs> just throw it on the end, and it makes sense of your sentence. I'm not sure. I think maybe this is this is just sort of romantic sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, that leads me to a point go on in that scene amy is immediately ready to cheat on her fresh husband (gasps) yes right out there they have just gotten married yeah you may definitely absolutely kiss the bride go fuck yourself amy go fuck yourself rory just get a divorce yeah she's not worth it no she's i was was still fuming from that later on when she said let's have a snog in the bushes See, okay, so I I defended this to Jim because he was fuming at both of them. How could you defend this to Jim? I want to hear this. I think if the first the first instance where she goes, "You may absolutely, definitely kiss the bride," that's a terrible Scottish <laughs> accent. <laughs> cut that, cut that immediately. Um, <laughs> that was great. So in, in universe point two, uh, Amy's from Azerbaijan. <laughs> and she's so okay, that point where she goes sound bite yeah you absolutely definitely may kiss the bride um (laughs) if that hadn't have happened if we just ignore that that's a terrible terrible scene i'm pretending that never happened yeah like most of this episode or logic let's just pretend logic never happened let's cut that bit um (laughs) (laughs) then when she's in the tardis and she's like how do you sneak away without giving me a snog in the bushes that's quite a light-hearted kind of fun thing that you might just say to a friend that you have absolutely no intention of no it's not she 100 percent means this you gotta take all amy's behavior in context but i um, i I, I, and Rory yeah, I walks in, and Rory's like there, and he's like part. And he presents of, his ass because like, he's a slug. Part of the yeah. joke. No. And they're a team, and like he tells her off because she's like, "It's my wedding day," and he's like, "It's our wedding day," and it's like they're that's more of of finally a, working as a unit. That's more of a plaintive plea than you know a, a call to morals hmm. on rory's part i like i like to think that second one she doesn't really mean the first one i agree is awful and don't, that's the first thing she says to him you've just yeah. brought him back from another dimension then the first thing is like oh, are you gonna give me a kiss now then a nice fuck to your resurrection yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right all right I'm done, de- ever- I'm done defending her <laughs> Fuck Amy. Yeah, fuck her. Yeah. All Except of Ledworth. Doctor, don't fuck don't Amy. Fuck her. <laughs> Only Rory. Fuck Every, her. Everyone but Rory. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of Ledworth as well knows. Like, I mean, poor Rory. All of Ledworth yeah. knows how impotent he is and oh. how replaceable he is. Yeah. But surely, uh, in this episode, after he has waited for 2,000 years, yeah. how much more of a betrayal is this? It's so, she, it's, she's so disrespectful towards him. She doesn't give him any, like... Anyway, um, the other thing... Does he have, like, a nice Auton plastic... No, he's just... No, because he's, he's human now. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Mm. I was going to say, you know... But but they still have the it memories... vibrates and everything. They still have the memories from before of what he did, of what sort of person yeah, he is. And, exactly. And what respect he ah, deserves. Yeah. But, but no, they don't. Only when the Doctor arrives does Rory go, oh, yeah. how can we forget about him? And, yeah. and Amy remembers and goes, oh, yeah, my husband waited for 2,000 years for me. Oh, but I want to bone this chap who's just turned but up wait, in But when does she say, my husband waited 2,000 years? She doesn't. she doesn't, but all the memories come flooding back at once. Oh, yeah. If she no. actually chose to dwell on it rather than just, you know, warming up her fanny. Yeah. <laughs> UK or US? <laughs> UK. <laughs> I, I don't know what the US version even is. <laughs> Coochie? <laughs> Fan- <laughs> Fannies, is, they call fa- bumbags fanny packs in America. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, the, the <laughs> other, <laughs> anyway, please. Anyway, <laughs> the other bit that really annoyed me is the when um, oh. the doc's on the phone and some, the Orient Express and there's danger and we need to go and get it. Go, and uh, he goes, "This is going to have to be goodbye." And Amy's like, "Yeah, yeah, I think it is." And Rory is in on the joke and he knows and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I think it's goodbye too." Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's and again, it's like them like he's not the outsider anymore he's now kind of working as a proper companion he's earned his place he is a companion he's coming with them and he's in on it but she's the only one who goes and like waves and says goodbye and like sees it through he should be stood by her waving goodbye to his wedding party as well and he doesn't get to he just has to stand and wait for her that's true where is rory's family yeah at his own wedding yeah i was glad someone finally took him in Mm. oh i don't know Mm. but but seriously i mean a- Amy's dad, of course, gets up. But on that top table, you would think Rory's parents are also sat. But we, do we Maybe. ever see anyone else? Maybe he doesn't have his parents. A shit there's a wedding, there's, isn't it? There's, there's, well, I mean, there's a huge wedding party. I mean, huge. There's, there's a significant wedding party, and we never really get to meet any of them. Uh, odds are he's got a bunch of relatives and friends there. None of which he wishes to say goodbye to. But she doesn't either. She just waves from the TARDIS. Yeah, exactly. Like, she's not genuinely saying goodbye. But I just think it would be nice if he got to wave off people as well. I reckon it's in not all minds. about. It's still all about her. And I feel like at this point it shouldn't be. It should be about them yeah. both. Yeah, but that's a flaw of the show. Yeah. That's a flaw of, like, Doctor Who. Yeah, which such. we're reviewing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, that's a flaw of Doctor Who as a as an entity as opposed to this episode. Yeah. Like, in it, the, the show itself, the, the not like the production crew, like, like everyone who is making this happen is not giving proper emphasis to or attention to one of the main characters. Yeah. Uh, it's not just this episode. Yeah. That's been the case ever since Rory appeared. But it has been the case the whole way through, and it just feels like week on week on week he proves himself and he earns his place and he's never given... He needs the, a spin-off. He do, well... <laughs> we need a, a, a Rory Roman spin-off. Yeah. That'd be the great. Le- the least Amy owes him is a spin-off by now. The Centurion. Oh, we can make this happen. A fake trailer. I can see a fake trailer happen. <laughs> The Centurion, he's like, in every time, there's, it's like the A-Team, except it's a Centurion. <laughs> yeah, but he's got to stay close to the Pandora, yeah. can't he? Yeah, he's got to drag it along behind him on all his adventures. Fine. <laughs> we, can, we can work that in. We can work that in. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned the Orient Express. Yes. Oh, I did, yes. Leon, is it in your notes? Is it in your notes? It's my very last note, in fact. Egyptian goddess on the Orient Express. That's the next adventure they're going on. We have had an Egyptian-themed episode on the orient express mummy on the orient express yeah. exactly written by I've got this. Um, jamie matheson Ooh. episode eight in series eight capaldi times and clara yes. but no goddess just a mummy just a mummy and but that's d- not the episode that's that not they're the going next on. episode either is it because there's a christmas one after this yeah I mean, this is yeah. one of those adventures between adventures. We never get yeah. To see. yeah. But that means that they go on. Oh, he says the Space Orient Express. But isn't the one with the mummy? Is, is that in space? Yes. Yeah. Is it? There's yes. more than one. Do you know what? There's more than one Orient Express on Earth at the minute. So why can't there be more than one at Space Orient Express? Because Fair when enough. the doctor turns up on the Orient Express, he's like, fucking Orient Express again. <laughs> Seems like I'm here every other week. <laughs> oh, I bet something. I can't do it. I bet something. Uh, I, I'm just going to make mine the alien, the anti Semitic alien from Phantom Menace. Uh, oh, I bet some sort of uh, Egyptian theme is going to happen. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> but yeah, it is weird that that is nothing to do with this. And yet it turns up, but differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, well, Orient Express is another one of those Kodak moments, quote unquote. I mean, Kodak moment is the wrong word to say, but the same way that in the last episode we went like, surely there's been a Stonehenge episode yeah. before. It's like, why has, haven't there been tons of Orient Express episodes already? But in the next episode, is, is Jodie Whittaker's second or third episode going to be taking everyone to space Florida and there isn't automatic sand? If you're just going to mess with the outer reaches of the Doctor Who universe with throwaway quotes, then, you know, have some thought for who's coming after you and trying to think of storylines and don't just piss all over it. Yeah. I have just two more notes. They're both about Amy. 
my first one is um, why does Amy never understand tears? This is the third time now that she's cried and gone, what's happening? Why are my eyes leaking? <laughs> like, why does she not get it? This she can't th- remember the previous two times. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. But still, come on. In every iteration of the universe, every Amy time she will cries. have, like, her face will leak. Yeah. And she'll be baffled. What's happening? What is this emotion? <laughs> Please explain to me. So we show she I'm meant to be a cold hearted bitch. I don't understand what this is. <laughs> But yet, my second point, she oh. is not a cold-hearted bitch Ooh. in Universe 2.0 because she finally, finally, yes, fucking tells Rory that she loves she him. She just sneaks him out <gasps> casually in a phone call. In a fa- she so just drops casually, it in. You almost miss it. Yes. In fact, I think you did. I did it's miss such it. A throwaway. It's like, love you. Like, she just says it all the time. Like, it's nothing to her. It's amazing. Oh. And I just wonder whether this is what happens when you, like, grow up with your parents and she's not emotionally scarred and the universe hasn't been <laughs> eating away at her soul for the past, like, 20 odd years. Yeah, and she hasn't been consumed with longing for an imaginary friend. Well, that when he actually comes along, <laughs> she that I love you stuff jump. just goes all out the window. But that's, but that's like... why it's really annoying when she does just, she just wants to snog the doctor because she's finally, like, engaging with Rory as she should engage with her husband. Like, she tells yeah. him that she loves him. And, uh, yeah, I like, I like that they did it, but. It doesn't make up for the hor- how horrible she is to him for the rest of the time. <laughs> yeah, for a brief moment when Rory is brushing his teeth and she's like, are you saying that just because you're afraid of me? And he says, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I-, I could buy that because the balance was somewhat yeah. correct. Yeah. But then when she goes back to being a, a doctor-hungry wolf again, it's like, oh, come on. Yeah. That's it. There are all my notes. Okay. I have a note. Oh. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. I was nice. going to say that. That was good, wasn't that it? That was so, so good. good. Boop. I love that. If I, <laughs> if I, I did have a note about that. What does it say? Hang on. Wait. Wait. Everybody wait. Oh, wait. I get goosebumps when it all starts falling into place at the wedding. That music. I like the music. Oh. Yeah. What music? Which music is it? Back of Cannon? I don't know. It's really uplifting and <laughs> <laughs> like it's all coming to this big climax and you know it's there and it's really tense and dramatic. The music is good. Yeah. In this whole two-parter, I have long on the podcast said this music was jarring and this music was annoying and this music was overblown. Did n- In fact, in this series in general, I think it's been better. Yeah. More in tune, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> 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 nice one. Yeah. Fez, anyone? I like the Fez. Fez is a cool. Fez, oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Beginning of the Fez. Oh, no, but I liked it when um, Amy steals the Fez and River shoots it. Yeah. Oh, again, how could you not? Ah, oh, that was so good. And it's like, yeah, all the like side characters kind of coming together and having their own little interactions that don't, everything doesn't kind of center on the Doctor. They're kind of playing off each other a little bit and it's so uh, nice. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice, because at the beginning of the series, the Doctor would have turned to Amy and screamed in her face, That was my only face! <laughs> Whereas now he's actually a bit, you know... Doesn't he say something like, oh, yeah. I'm going go to I'm, I'm gonna have to go and buy, buy a new buy face? Buy a new one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's actually going to buy one as opposed a, to steal it from a museum. It's after it's gone, and he's like, put, it's like oh, he's checking, he's checking, legs, yes. But I cool. Yeah. Fez. Big, oh yeah. Oh, Fez. <laughs> I'll buy a Fez. <laughs> yeah, that was good too. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> Can someone uh, remind me of the context of the following sound bites? It's Ooh. something uh, along the lines of "Have a mint, buy a sled." What? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> okay, here's the sound bite. <laughs> I have no idea what it was, but I wrote it down. I feel like, oh, this sounds really funny. I'm gonna. <laughs> I've got twelve minutes. That's good. Twelve minutes to live. How is that good? Oh, you can do loads in 12 minutes. It's like a mint, buy a sledge, have a fast bath. Come on, the room. <laughs> oh, oh, what you can do in um, 12 minutes. Have a fast bath. <gasps> yes. 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 Have a mint. Win. Buy a sled. <laughs> <laughs> Not go sledding. <laughs> you don't have enough time no, no, to no. find a hill no, no, and no, some no, no, snow no. in, you know, but 12 you can, minutes. You can buy one, though. You can buy You can be prepared <laughs> for sledding. <laughs> I think you could have more than one minute in 12 minutes, actually. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> a whole packet. You don't want to overindulge. Them, do <laughs> no, <you? laughs> Number five. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. <laughs> the doctor is at the heart of the explosion. Therefore, he won't be part of Universe 2.0. Or. 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 Do you want to take this one? Well, because the. T- because the. TARDIS is exploding on the other side of the crag. And how? How is, there a, how is there a barrier by which the TARDIS separates itself from the rest of the universe into which it's exploding? Because it's a different universe, and the barrier is... 
So it's like, is it, is it like within the TARDIS? Like the TARDIS creates a universe within itself Ooh. and is pushed outwards. That would be clever. I like that one. That, we could go with that. And the Doctor with it. Because at the heart of Explosion makes it sound like it's too central to appear in the universe, but it could be that from that centre he is pushed out beyond the extremes. Mm. Is that it? Uh, I think that makes perfect sense. I have another two theories. Wow. Go for them. Uh, uh, numero uno, the Pandorica needs uh, fragments or atoms of reality of our universe to, uh, f- 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 from which to extrapolate universe two, and maybe the Doctor is part of that. The, I mean, he's been everywhere. He he's touched everything. There in a are way. always atoms of the Doctor in the universe. Even exactly, he's not in it. Physically. It's like we're yeah. all stardust. We're all bits of the Doctor in a way. Like not bits of the gross, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, so th- that's number one. And number two, the, the whole remember your, remember your parents and when you wake up, they'll be there. The Doctor has memories of the universe. So while the physical universe is being recreated by the TARDIS and the Pandorica in tandem, maybe the Doctor's presence is what puts all the bits and pieces in the right order, so to speak. His memory, his knowledge of everything. He brings back Amy's parents. It's not actually her. No, well, I think maybe both. Maybe both. everyone, yeah. yeah. And he puts Rory back. I like when he says to baby Amelia and he says, love Rory. And then I think, oh, was she ever going to love Rory? Have you just put that in her head? And There's another Rory Rory's in Rory's like, class. yeah, <laughs> this like Weasley kid at school that she actually doesn't like very much, but she's yeah, Rory compelled Jenkins. to love him. And, that, and that's why she's so <laughs> mean to him. No, no, Rory Jenkins is, is a buff rugby player. <laughs> it's like, forget this slug. I'm going after the hunk. Oh. I love that idea. That's a brilliant idea. She actually, like, she was destined to hate this man. Yeah. Or like, just be completely indifferent yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, she wouldn't even be aware he existed. <laughs> Like, just Rory. <laughs> nice one, Doc. Well done. <laughs> I, think, I think your second theory is attributing too much of a panentheistic sort of role to the Doc. Okay. But Fine. It's a theory. I'll buy your first one. All right. Cool. <laughs> and now it is time to rate this. Did we laugh or hate this? Bing bong, bing bong. Hey, la, 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 la. Ratings. I'll go first. Let's hear it. 3.7. Oh. <laughs> that was not as bad lot, as I thought it would be. That's quite a lot lower than last week. What did you give last week? Well, last week's was 4.2, but that was with a plus 0.5, so... Mm. <laughs> oh, however... Did you actually add plus 0.5? <laughs> well, who's to say? I'd say, though, technically this week should have a plus 0.5, because there were no um, spoilers. For Series 6. For series 6. Bingo. Mm. Oh, don't... No, I'm nope. sticking with 3.7. Look, I'm trying to save you time here. <laughs> That's, oh, it? Okay. that's it you're done yeah oh bish bash bosh <laughs> you me no you go okay so uh, i'm gonna <laughs> i'll lower my score a little bit <laughs> so originally i had written 4.8 <laughs> <laughs> my goodness <laughs> me <laughs> that's why i said i am running out of decimal points my, there, yeah. <laughs> my headphones fell off <laughs> I originally wrote 4.8 because oh. I was I found it so emotional mm. and so uplifting. Yeah. And I could not stop smiling through throughout most of this episode. Yeah. Uh, it loved it. But I'm going to I'm going to downgrade that to 4. 4.6. It's better than 4.5. I don't know. I don't, can't remember what I gave Blink. I can't remember what I gave any of those like great episodes. But I think this you gave fun. Blink 4.7. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> 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 this is fantastic though. I yeah, loved it. Yeah, yeah 4.6. Okay, I uh, oh, I don't know where I'm gonna go. Well, it's definitely gonna be four point five or above. Um, I I loved it as well, and like I said at the beginning of the episode, I know there are probably holes. Drew's poked at most of them. I feel like we've <laughs> given you a fair run for your money though, and trying to make up some answers, but didn't work. <laughs> well, let podcast land be the judges. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I but I just don't care. I don't care. I love it. It's a wonderful episode. It's so emotional. You become untethered from reality, the both of you. <laughs> it's like you're living in a new universe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but and and the discussion that we've had about it has been so much fun. And I in my mind that adds that adds to it because Absolutely. I love like great sci fi you should be able to like pull apart and test and um and yeah, and we've done that. And um and the fact that it's linked in how many previous episodes have we just referenced now talking about this episode? Yeah. It's been the entire way through. It hasn't just been a 
throw right bad wolf on a wall and that job done it's like it's been integral to the whole series um are you saying the crack is now better than bad wolf i like the crack yeah. oh. <laughs> um, and there are problems i still it still bothers me that we don't know what the silence is yet and the silence is still talking through the crack and that like i'm not sure about that um but and yeah and amy wants to snog the doctor i'm not gonna decimal point off for that because that just was unnecessary and they don't treat rory as mu- as well as he deserves um but yeah other than that characterization for all of them was wonderful everybody grew in this episode river river is like um, basically confirmed that her and the doctor are married and it's like everyone's <laughs> it's all happy and, and it sets up the next series with a mystery it does it'll soon change and yes. then what will you think i know like yeah that we didn't touch on that actually yeah that's a really interesting little kind of teaser it doesn't give anything away but it just intrigues you um yeah so i loved it i mean ah sorry, i'm gonna go 4.6 as well <laughs> excellent racing <laughs> why thank you victory dance <laughs> <laughs> once again we've forgotten to say that matt smith does a brilliant job as always oh he's fantastic as always. in his farewell monologue when he's saying goodbye to his 900 years oh, of life this yeah. is a guy who's in his late 20s and i am buying it completely yeah. absolutely Oh uh, yeah, he has long. Uh, possibly in the last episode, as in in part one of this thing, did it feel like you know what? Now nah, this is him. This yeah. is his character. Yeah. This love is now let's hear from podcast land. Max two fifty, or it would get out of hand. Okay, so we do have one listener mini for this, and it comes from Michael, Michael Ridgeway. Ridgeway. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Wait, where did you come from? <laughs> Flappy? <laughs> uh, start? Oh, yeah. So, Michael begins his um, review by saying, The Doctor spouts Star Trek Voyager techno bubble and presses reset. Things I liked. Attempting a different finale, brackets deviating from the big bad model of seasons one to four. Oh, that was number one. Number two. Um. <laughs> oh. Then Michael continues with Michael. a list of. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, <laughs> how could you? Yeah, I, I, I accidentally caught a glimpse of the rating he gave before we press record. <laughs> Michael says, "I call bullshit." Leon, Ooh. would you like to begin? All right, here we go. <laughs> Number one, how did the Doctor escape the Pandorica to tell Rory to let him out of the Pandorica? Uh, he Bill and Ted did it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which we've objected to in all prior episodes, but this one apparently is fine. <laughs> because it's done with panache. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but yes, Flair, I... with brioche, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could go for a brioche. <laughs> I, I, I see where you're coming from, Michael. <laughs> Number two? Number two. Were um, Amy's parents sucked into the crack? (laughs) If so, how does Amy exist? Was she adopted? How has Amy still got drawings of the Doctor in her bedroom if the Doctor never existed? With hindsight of River's origins, how can River exist? True. How can River exist if the Doctor never existed in order to give the TARDIS spoiler diary to Amy so that Amy could remember the Doctor for him to re-exist? All of this is included in the point four that have been subtracted from this otherwise That's perfect gonna, episode. Well, I also feel like we, <laughs> co- we covered a, a bit of this. We did, yes. Just listen to the review, Michael, and yeah. then you'll understand. It's like you didn't even pay attention, Michael. <laughs> Michael. Michael still has five further points. <laughs> Number three. Michael's got more points than you, Drew. <laughs> Number three. If the Doctor's foes were erased, how could they have imprisoned him in the Pandorica in the first place? Well. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> no, no, you, you read out number four. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me disprove. Let's address Michael's point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, come on. Let's, let's, let's give Michael the, the time he's deserved by <laughs> putting together this uh, list of erroneous counter arguments. <laughs> okay. uh, so, all right, hang on. He was imprisoned in the Pandorica in Universe 1. Yep. Then he was undone. Mm hmm. And in Universe 2, he was never in the Pandorica. True. So, what's the problem? I see no problem, actually. Yeah. Universe 2, where he materialises just from the power of love and memory. Yes. And in which case, one. anything can happen. That's schmaltz. But there is precedent for it. People can become human just by love alone. Oh, so now it's happened twice, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 
It's very schmaltzy, but it. We're not it denying works. it's schmaltzy. I knocked off point four for the schmaltz. <laughs> But you used to you used to knock off a lot more than that for schmaltz. What's <laughs> happened to you guys? With the Are internal- you still the same people? Have you lost all your memories? <laughs> Within the- <laughs> Leon's hand just opened up and he pointed laser guns at me, Podcast Land. Within the internal logic of this episode, it, it, that schmaltz works. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I, I, I agree this doesn't make sense from the outside of the episode, but within the episode it does make sense. Mm-hmm. Seems like Michael's reviewing from the outside because he has <laughs> four more points, Leon. Would you care to read number four? Sure, uh, number four. So now the rule is just remember people and they re-exist. Oh, look at your explanation from ten seconds ago. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Why has the crack even been a threat this whole season? Why doesn't the Doctor just remember Sir Jorah and all those poor clerics that were erased in flesh and stone? Bring those dudes back! Nah, they're dead to us now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot to focus on remembering. Like, he can't bring everybody yeah, back. and no time in which to do it. Yeah. No, that's, that's a also, super good point. They're part of a space church. Sacrifice them on their altar of ignorance. But we've already established that the Doctor cannot bring people back. Only Amy has the power to bring people back. And she does have to really concentrate hard. So she got her mum and dad and the Doctor. I feel like any more is just asking too much of Also, a question for you, Michael. How do you know that Sir Jorah and those poor clerics weren't revived? Yeah, true. True Off story. Screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because we didn't see it doesn't In all mean of it your didn't faces. happen. Yeah. yeah. In fact, everyone <laughs> from the previous 46 years of Doctor Who who died and people were a little bit sad, they are all restored happily to their families right now. Well, why not? Yeah. If the next showrunner is listening to this, then I hope that, like, you, you still have time to write a little cutscene about this. Like, you can fix this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Number five. Uh, Michael's <laughs> fifth point. The Doctor survived a direct extermination again. Please stop. You're making the Daleks look like chumps. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But the Daleks are chumps. But he survived long enough to, get him, to plug himself into the Pandorica, which has healing powers. Yeah, which won't let people die. Exactly. Or will keep them dead. Keep them. Won't let people decompose. Yes. Yeah. Either one. Mm. But yeah, it didn't. It didn't let him die. It was. It was on death's door. And had the Pandora not been there, he probably would have died. Or regenerated. Or regenerated. Yeah. But because he managed to crawl to the Pandora in time, he paused. It. He didn't die any further. Yeah. Also, I believe it's fair to it. it it, it's fair to assume that the Dalek hadn't been 100% restored. True. It was still, like, partly fossilized, it seems, so yeah. possibly not wielding quite as potent a laser weapon as it normally would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How about that? Maybe. Mm. Right. It was like, uh, sorry, devil's advocate, but yeah. It was, <laughs> it was like the last little drip of juice of a partially restored Dalek. I'll, I'll yeah. give you that. I yeah. thought that sentence would go, was going elsewhere, but yeah. <laughs> Number six. How can the sonic screwdriver open the galaxy's most perfect prison, but not a regular lock in Vampires of Venice? It doesn't work on wood. Lock isn't wood. Lock's metal. When did it not work in Vampires of Venice? Exactly. He said it. No, they say it doesn't work on wood. Yeah, but it must but have been a wooden. Lock. Is it when the? Is it like the lock? The the hatch? Yeah. Is that what they're unable to? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But I feel like you had a good explanation for why it worked here. Didn't you? Like, oh, so the frequency of the, like, it's set to his DNA, effectively. Like, it's set to copy, mimic. I think that the was Marie. I was, think, that, was that your theory? No, I think that was you, Drew. I think that was you as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry if it was you, Marie. Drew's just like, I didn't say anything positive. Don't put my words into my mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. It's 3.7 the whole way. <laughs> That's still a pretty high score, Drew. Let's face it. Yeah, yeah. 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 You I enjoyed it a little bit. You guys are mad. You enjoyed it a little bit. There's a seventh point. Oh. Go for it. Shall I? Uh, number seven. Seriously, Rory has zero psychological damage after waiting nearly 2,000 years. Look at what a few years being lonely did to Luke in Last Jedi. Uh, what's Rory been up to all this time? Why hasn't he become an expert in languages in, or origami? Michael. Yeah, good point. How do you know he hasn't? That's also true. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, you know what? He, I reckon he's actually flaunting all the myriad languages he's learned. It's just that the TARDIS is translating everything yeah. for our benefit. Yeah, he's speaking, like, every word is in a different language, and Amy's just here in English. Yeah. Like, oh, same old Rory. Yeah. And he's actually trying desperately to show off. <laughs> like, please, love me! Respect me! <laughs> like, I'm saying there's an Esperanto. <laughs> and the tragic part is, his 2,000 years of newfound skills only return to him when the TARDIS materialises 
that exact same point. So, so he'll he's never be able to use it. He's like, listen, Amy, I'm so impressive. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a door. Let me snog my wee thing. <laughs> But it's a fair point. He should be. He should be scarred. Mm. He should be like a, a old Wolverine, uh, like in uh, Logan, Logan, right? Mm. He should be like that, like almost immortal. And he's seen the worst of mm. humanity, and he's been to war a million times. Or he's seen. 8,000 better people than Amy to go out with <laughs> over the intervening two millennia and he shacked up with any of them. Oh. Maybe he did. Maybe. He's a Highlander now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's impervious to STIs. Who wants to live forever? <laughs> Rory. That's answered that question. <laughs> oh, uh, do you want to read the conclusion to this? So, yeah. So, Michael wraps up by saying this episode was either genius Yes. I'm gonna say, should we just stop there? <laughs> or, <laughs> an emperor's genius. New, or an emperor's new clothes epic fudge. And he gives this 2.1 out of 5 serious migraines this episode gave me. <laughs> See, I think if that's 2.1 serious migraine, that's a, that's a negative score. So actually what you've got is a, oh. is a 3.9. Oh. No, a 2.9. <laughs> <laughs> Stop retconning so our fans' reviews as point, Moffat has retconned everything up to this point. 2.9 no, happy, <laughs> non headachey day. Like, <laughs> fun, fun times. Yeah. No, this was a fantastic mini. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, respect the Ridgeway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Michael. <laughs> Love you, Michael. <laughs> no, bye bye. <laughs> Bing bong, future Ponkin here with not one, not two, but three further listener minis that have come in since we recorded our review. Uh, the first one comes from Kyle Rath. Hello, Kyle. Who says, Pandorica 2, the big banging. This reverse country song sees everything come back thanks to a memory. A wibbly wobbly, fezzy wezzy, and a whole lot of moffety magic make this closed loop open up a lot of questions. To keep things simple, here's what I like. All the timey wimey. All the eleven. In Doctor Who, nothing ever really goes away, and that can be a good thing. The fantastic teeny bopper, Amelia Pond. Hell hath no fury like a river scorned. <laughs> Rory and the wee parents and rubber Matt Smith. Despite the early onset hand waviness of the Moffat era, there are some fun and lovely moments in this second part. It is slightly more than just okay. Oh, really? Okay then. And he gives this 3.8 out of 5. Saying, in conclusion, stoned Daleks would have been way funnier. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been pretty funny. Okay, cool. All right. 3.8 out of 5. Uh, we're still pretty high. I like it. Very, very good. Thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, people can follow Kyle on Twitter. He is at Sinister Super Spy. That is super without any vowels. And uh, please, you know, high five him online. Say hi from us and uh, tell him if you agree or disagree. I will say one thing, though. The questions that you alluded to before, Kyle, may be answered in this next listener mini. This one comes from... Yeah, spoiler alert. I've already read these. Uh, the next one comes from Tracy from America. <clears throat> Sorry, that's Tracy from America. Yeah, I've got a bit of a call, Tracy. Sorry about that. Uh, Tracy says, never liked Bill and Ted style closed time loops. How did things happen on the way in? The quote unquote first time. To remedy, please read my solution. Mm -hmm. I have. It's awesome. Tracy offers the following solution. I am Rory. The world just ended in a cataclysm of supernovas. I found out I'm a plastic duplicate who exists outside the normal flow of space-time. I killed my wife as the duplicate programming took me over. I fought it off, but too late. I held her lifeless body and asked for a miracle, but none came, and she was claimed by the erosion of reality. Now alone, it occurred to me that I knew the plans of the Nestine who programmed me. The Doctor was locked in the Pandorica, if both still existed. My Amy was gone, but maybe I could save the Doctor. The Pandorica was disintegrating. It crumbled to my touch. I told the Doctor as much as I could bear to. He guessed the rest. He was silent. Then finally he told me he could fix it, rewrite things. He'd go back and free himself from the Pandorica sooner, saving Amy by placing her in it. The Pandorica with Amy in it, uh, with her head full of universe, would shelter more of the Earth for longer, until the Doctor could work out a way to save it. But I'd still have to endure the trauma of shooting Amy, because that was what broke through my programming. And I will, because I am Rory. No one will take that away now. Not. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy, that is 
First off, that's super duper well written. Thank you very much for sending that in. Secondly, yeah, that answers the questions. That is a very, very plausible theory. I feel like you've just unbill and tedded this. Very, very cool stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gents who are not Tracy, you can follow Tracy online. She is at Yekotnyatnuf. That's Fountain Tracy backwards. And next up we have David E. He's David E. <laughs> Hello, David. Uh, David goes, so the previous episode was verging on epic. Can Moffat follow that with an even more epic resolution? Um, no, he can't. I'd call this the absolute opposite of epic. <gasps> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I love this. I love the opposing uh, uh, racings. This is great. Okay. David goes on. It seems that all of those thousands of aliens vanish off the face of the planet as soon as the Doctor is put in the Pandorica. Like, within minutes. Rory can just sidle up to it and open it. Is there no one keeping guard? All the nice stuff with Rory keeping watch over the box for thousands of years is quite nice. Unfortunately, Amy is such a horrible cow, I have real trouble rationalizing why on earth he would do such a thing. The scene shifts to modern day, where we're suddenly told that the universe is vanishing bit by bit. We spend ages just wandering around a deserted museum with one Dalek covered in porridge. How do we go from every enemy the Doctor has ever faced to just one fucking porridge Dalek? <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. It's also a bit much for me to swallow that if the TARDIS explodes, it fucks up literally everything in the universe. There used to be tons of these things flying about. What's more, we never find out who is responsible for it. Rubbish! Have to find a positive here, I suppose. Matt Smith's silly dance at the wedding is quite fun. The Doctor going back through previous episodes is good as well. However, the previous episode was so expansive and grand, and this feels so small, self-contained and weirdly uneven. It's hard to believe it's written by the same person. Big Bang? More like Limp Dick. Oof, wow. And David gives this a 1.7. Holy smoke -aroonies. Okay, so <laughs> it's been about, well, like 10 days since we recorded our review, uh, <laughs> as in 10 days between this Future Punk and the rest of this podcast episode. And in hindsight, maybe 4.6 was a bit of a high racing to give this episode. I admit that. I do feel that this is way better than a 1.7, though. I will say, David, I agree with a few of your points. Thank you very much for sending in your mini. In fact, thank you everyone who sent in minis. You are awesome. Awesome, awesome people. That's it for this Future Punk. Back to the show. Ciao, ciao, bing bong. And that's it, you pricks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were trapped in a previous destroyed universe because we haven't got anything else to read out. Yeah, that's true. Uh, if you didn't know that we were going to be recording today and that we were soliciting minis, then perhaps you're not following us on Facebook or uh, on Twitter. You should. Yeah, we'll let you know about these things. Yeah, yeah. I'm at Drew Backwen. Yes, you are. Uh, I am at Punkin. You know how to spell that. I certainly hope so. And we collectively are at Who Back When. Oh, oh, what's next? What's next? It's like a Dickensian thing, isn't Christmas. it? Christmas. Christmas with the doctor. Christmas with the doctor. Good Christmas. Good Christmas. What's it called? Hang on, I'll look it up. Something about snowman. Evil snowman. Evil snowman invade. No. Is it? No. I think I think it's like the girl who's in. It's it's like a. Is it the woman who's trapped in the in the time? She can only come out for Christmas. And she gets thirty days, and they're all Christmases. That's a nice one. Or is it? I don't know. We tune in next week and find out. I don't remember it. A Christmas Carol. Yeah. Bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, hey. You know what we should also do at this point? Should we review Series 5? Is we that should. not what we do at the end of a series? We could have a, like a quick bonus episode about that, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, bonus episode about uh, this season coming out next. Mm. Can't wait. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. And if you have any views about season five, then uh, please send them in. Yeah. Trenton, looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dokie. Until the next time, you've been a lovely audience. Thank you so much for listening. Rock on. And ciao ciao. Bye bye. Toodles. Kablamo! Did you enjoy the show? Then please do what the cosmos compels you to and spread the gospel of who back when. Tell your friends! But I've got no friends! No problemo, tell some strangers! Hooray! Like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash who back when. All in one word. Are you into Twitter? Awesome! High five us online and we'll high five you right back. You guessed it, we're at who back when. All in one word. 
Check us out on Instagram for behind-the-scenes photos and other Whovian goodness. Watch our videos or even listen to our podcast on YouTube. That's whobackwhen.com slash YouTube. Vote us up on Reddit, listen to us on Stitcher, and head on over to our website, whobackwhen.com, where you can submit a review of your own, browse the article archives, and peruse our visual index of aliens, monsters, and more, which increases in Kablamos with every episode. And lastly, give us a rating and review on iTunes. It helps our show get noticed and earns you lots of karma points. That's it. Rock on and be rad and excellent to each other. Catch your earballs in our next Who review or bonus episode. Until then, cha ciao. Who back when?